Rochester Sackford Unified School District Board Meeting to order. Excellent. Uh, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? The only thing is, is the warning, um, that won't be ready to take action on tonight. I think the, based on what you decide for logistics. Okay. Like in person, like we'll need a special meeting to adopt the two warnings. Okay, we need to say. work out the logistics that we need to make yeah. the form so say we, the right yeah, thing. We won't be ready to take any action. Does okay. it need a special meeting or can we that roll to basically April? Uh, Tara, I think, is going to say she will we'll need it before that because we'll want to get the mailer out by the end of the month. Yep, yep, yep. Got so, it. but it could be quick, yep. quick meeting. Okay. Great. Any uh, further adjustments to the agenda? Uh, no celebration of learning tonight as folks are enjoying the last moments of vacation. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we still. I'm sorry, I'm going to get it moved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with Donna Gallant and her presentation on, mm -hmm. on, on direct instruction and what uh, she and the team have been doing under your leadership, Lindy, has been just remarkable. And we've seen some of the results here in, in the scoring. And I just think we have a lot to celebrate. That's great. Thanks. Uh, all right. Um, if somebody could help me assign times. I got you. Wonderful. You just want to write this down. Okay, we well, tried. Who, am I going to be the timekeeper too? Time, do you want me to just time for you? That is that easier? Would probably be helpful. I can do that. Okay, great. Reports are going to take, we had about an hour tonight because there's the EI right. presentation. Okay, about an hour for the board reports. Yeah. So we're aware yeah. of that. Okay, great. All right, then we have the um, Tuesday, February 1st. Uh, meeting minutes in front of us to be approved. So entertain a motion. I move. Uh, and I also want to, in the moving, I'm sorry, but Mercy. the roadmap of success, the goals. Uh, by 2025, 80% of the students will be met. Classroom, universal instruction, and not needing intervention. That's bold, that's necessary, that's that's why we're here. Right. Yeah, so that's I great. I just want to commend you again for explaining that and emphasizing that and committing your administration to that goal. Thank you. Awesome. That's why I move. You move to second? Yes. I guess I'll second. <laughs> All right, uh, all in favor of passing the minutes as presented? Signify by saying aye. 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 All right, so moved. Hi, Ethan, you want to take over? We're at public comment. He's muted. He's. Not be muted. He's got his hair cut or something, though. He's shaved out, man. You're muted, <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> there, hi. Uh, hi. Hi. How are you? Good. I can't see anybody, but um, yes, I'm here. Okay. In clean shape. For a little while, anyway. Um, so, you know what? Amy, why don't you keep going? I'm going to see if I can get um, my uh, uh, agenda up on here. Okay. Sorry, I'm not very prepared for this. Okay. So, I apparently. That's, that's fine. Okay, well then we're at number five, public comment. Um, it looks like we have um, some people online. I just, do we ask each person or do we just? Yeah, you can ask Janet. Okay, I'll just ask each person if they have a comment at this time, the public. Uh, Janet Whitaker. Okay, now you have to mute Ethan though. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Uh, Jenny Austin? I'm good, thank you, Amy. Okay. Uh, Eric Lafayette? Our person, Easy, yeah. I. Ah, okay, great. So that's to, so there's two public the comments. the phone, I believe. Yeah. Okay, yes. Great. So um, moving on to board comment. Well, I'll, uh, I'll start. I guess it's... Um, 
I was thinking about the uh, uh, school, the next step for our sixth graders, and I didn't know if we were going to be able to offer some type of school fair type thing. I know I went through it last year with finding a school for my daughter, and I want to express the doing it early as yep. possible. And so I, if, if um, so we are... So we've reached out to all the sixth grade parents already and there's some who have already made some decisions Wonderful. and some who have asked for some connections to be made and then next uh wednesday i believe it is yes next wednesday at six o'clock the principal from white river valley uh, middle school owen bradley will be at rochester to meet with some folks as okay. well but um we reached out before break to see what parents needed okay. whether they wanted a fair or just needed help connecting wonderful well that's that's good i was just it was on my mind um and uh, you know, if if we are trying to promote schools within our SU too, it's a good yep. opportunity to do so. So okay. Uh, is there any further board comment, uh, Ethan, Robert? No. No comment. Thank you. No comment. Justine and Pat. Okay. No comment. Thank you. Moving on to the board reports. Uh, start with the superintendent. Uh, so you have my report in hand. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to you to get the, the initial presentation tonight from EEI. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think our best course of action tonight is to decide what your meeting logistics are going to be in person versus Australian ballot. Um, if you wanted to delay even further, you could. Those are all options you have by statute right now. Okay. So I think you should decide those um, this evening. If you decide to move to Australian ballot, there's a certain motion you make. Tara has that language for you. Okay. Um, if you decide to stay in person and on your normal meeting date, that's great too. Um, and then I think we have a quick special meeting here in the next week to adopt the warnings. Okay, great. Um, we have some discussion tonight too um, in regards to how you want to use your, bill, uh, your reserve funds during Tara's report. So okay. I think that's the other last detail, too, for the mornings. And other than that, I'll take any questions folks have. Um, I have a, this is Robert, I have a question. If we go to uh, Australian ballot, what's the procedure for getting on the, getting on the ballot? So you have to fill out a candidate consent form, Robert, but they waive the um, signature part. So it's just filling out a candidate consent form and turning that in. Uh, it would be 30 days prior to the vote. Okay, and that would be turned into your you town, clerk. To town clerk. Town clerk. Yep. Okay, any uh, further questions for the superintendent uh, regarding his report? Um, how are we going to be? Are we going to be discussing separately the question of when? Yes. Um, uh, discussion item nine two is the annual meeting yeah. logistics. So we will fully discuss um, the it. differences in our options at Thank that you. point. Yes. Okay. Principal's report. Yeah. So um, you have my report in front of you. It seems like. February was a short month, <laughs> which it is. It is, but it didn't feel it while we were in it. That's <laughs> the way I'm going to put that. Yeah. Um, can't think of any major adjustments to it other than you asked the question about middle school and where kids were looking, and we have made those connections with families. Great. Um, and we still have two more weeks of winter wellness left when we return, so a little spring skiing and snowboarding, which will be great. And, and how's that uh, been going? It's, it's been going well. I think it's got a few hiccups, but more so just because everybody's staffing, including ours, were, you know, rotates yep. <laughs> on yep. the day. And it's new, so every you, you learn it's from new, every and experience. You, and you kind of forget, like, it's amazing what a year does, <laughs> year gap uh, does, but the kids are enjoying it, so that's all, it's all worthwhile. And are the some are some kids getting to a cross country ski? Um, We're actual? doing all that on campus or on site. So oh, last okay. year through grant funds, we were able to acquire our own cross country ski, skis that people like clip into that are yeah. age appropriate. So um, kids have been cross country skiing and snowshoeing and ice skating on site. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, and 
that's pretty much pretty much it. I can't think of anything. I unless folks have questions. Um I'm, go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Uh, another amazing report. Um, uh, your three bullets are no amazing. Problem, um, your in-service training on February 11th, you're talking about awareness uh, where students are feeling safe mm -hmm. and continuing to pursue that and how you're going to do it and do it well. Um, and that's just so important and the teachers being engaged and active and positive is positive. Uh, you also talked about in your in-service uh, session on February 11th um, to try to get more almost like real-time assessments on how kids are doing so that they can adjust their either style or content or approach to learning. And I just thought that was fantastic because that's a challenge. And grouping together with your, your team, uh, you can share that and share ideas and pursue that. Um, and we're going to talk about the results of the SU performance um, and a later agenda item. And then the idea of the third bullet, which was four students are now moving out of special intervention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, exciting. That's something to be celebrating. And we've got to make sure that they can continue... Uh, but you're well aware of that. <laughs> yes. But to be able to, to say that four of our students, thanks to the efforts of the faculty of... Actually, four for literary and two from math. So six. Thank you. So, so there's actually six, six total yes. for the two campuses, and it's paying off. That's, that's very nice. exciting. That's a lot of forward movement with our uh, education. And I know one of our goals is to, uh, by 2025, is to, is by 50%, move the kids in level one out of level one. And here's an example right. how we're doing that right, right now. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, did anybody else have any uh, further questions for the principal regarding the principal's report? Okay. There being none, we'll move on to the business manager's report. Good evening, everyone. You have my initial report, which outlines all of the due dates coming up for the month of March. And yesterday, we actually received a notification from the child nutrition team that they are releasing another grant opportunity for us, which is called the Supply Chain Assistant Fund. And that will uh, give our supervisory union up to $19,738.80 of additional resources for our food due to the supply chain issues. So we'll be applying for that as well. And then otherwise, the majority of my report is going to be about the research I did after our discussion at the last meeting for your building reserve funds, which is the second memo dated February 15th. So based on what I could, what I found in your audits and in your warnings, the funds that are in the FY21 audit are actually Stockbridge Capital Improvements. So we will change that name in the audit to make sure that it is appropriately identified. And then if there's any questions on that history. Does anybody have any questions regarding the history of the um, building reserve funds for Tara at this time? She did a great job of researching that. Thank you for laying it all out. Yes. You're welcome. Okay. Glad we got to the bottom of it. Great. So uh, in the audit, it will be uh, appropriately named. Yeah. Great. And then for moving forward, um, do we want to discuss that now or later? I don't. I don't think it's done right now. 
Yep, I believe it needs to be under your report as I do not see an agenda item for it. So okay. So when we did the budget, we had $284,554 as the surplus in FY21. So of that, we used the $150,000 as revenue to give tax credit back to the voters leaving $134,554 to be dispersed to reserve funds as requested to the voters. So we wanted to talk about how you wanted to do that. And I have an understanding that there is a desire to have the dandelion daycare proceeds that have been in the general fund surplus since the sale to be allocated to the Rochester Capital Projects Building Maintenance Fund. So that if we did that, and it would leave a balance of $63,650, which I would recommend either dividing in between the two Rochester and Stockbridge funds, or perhaps dividing it three ways and getting some money into the tuition reserve fund. So again, that's gonna be your decision as the board, but that's what you have available how you want to move forward okay um i don't know if i need to bring uh any of the new members up to speed with what what of this dandelion daycare uh, possible be helpful thank you okay so um back when uh we we started uh discussions on merging together as a district one of the things that uh, needed to happen was to sell um, a piece of property that was owned by Rochester. It was uh, a building that's in the front of the elementary school, always known as the Dandelion Daycare. It used to be a childcare facility. And um, the pr previous Rochester board had updated it and hoped to create a daycare at that time, but because of a number of things, it just didn't happen. Yep. Um, the Rochester board, under the guidance of uh, previous leadership, um, had a meeting and thought that we had set up the fund appropriately, like you said, per the guidance we had at the time, um, to set up a reserve fund to be able to put the proceeds from the sale of the Dandelion Daycare into a, the said fund. It was set up as a general education fund just so that it, there was no, um, just to keep it very open. Um, and I do have meeting notes and everything from, from that time to bring everybody to a good understanding. What we ended up finding out was that it was ill-advised, it was incorrectly done, and we actually did not officially set up a dandelion daycare, uh, or a, a reserve fund. We, we didn't, and so therefore the money could not go into a said fund because there was no fund. So it went into, um, I don't want to say the word wrong, did it go into the order? General fund surplus, the, 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 stayed in your general fund. Stayed throughout. in the general fund surplus. Right. You can't, a board doesn't have the authority to set up a reserve fund. Only the voters can do so. That's why it has to go on your warning and has to be voted on by the residents. Right. And um, since we are in in this position that we do have these funds, um, I would love to to do what the Rochester Board had initially s proposed to do and to put the funds from that sale into a reserve fund. Um, in previous years, we just haven't been in a financial situation, and so we just kept it in there to make sure that we stayed afloat. I, I agree with what Tara is saying, sure. um, but I'd like to hear other people's comments on it. Um. First a question and a comment. The question is, um, our budget that we approved and everything else, did it depend on utilizing uh, these monies, this 134,554 to so-called balance our budget, or is that? No, no it's it relies on the 150. It relies on the 150. Okay. So the 150,000 is the revenue that you use but that, taxable but that state. still is money that we're putting back in. So in the future years, we're not going to have that 150 to put back in. So what is our plan then? Well, the plan is we run another 
surplus, surplus. right? I mean, the goal would be that we're not running deficits, right. right? And if we budget right, we should be within about 2% every year. Um, we don't budget to the penny. We shouldn't be. Right. Because we could have kids move in or right. have something happen around needing to hire. So, um, But where would that revenue come doing. from then? What? Came from your surplus. Where In the future? Where, what? Well, right now we're projected at like a $300,000 surplus. So some of that is just over time higher. you're gonna have to spend that over time we have to dwindle the 150 down yeah. amy is the answer uh, no i understand that but if we if we're putting money back in we're putting money into the budget to to offset taxes, offset taxes so we won't have that next year so we are anticipating you will have that okay. you will have another surplus because this past year it was only 700 and something dollars right Right, but remember, the, this current fiscal year's budget, we budgeted for staffing levels at people's experience level, and our staff was much more experienced than what we ended up with, which is what's helping us project towards mm -hmm. a surplus. So just to pause the board, you've already adopted your budget. That right. 150 is in it. So, I mean, we can talk about how we're going to find that. We talked about that last month. You've been budgeting surplus revenue the last several years. Mm -hmm. And so the answer is we have to dwindle that down. Otherwise, you're going to see a significant tax increase all of a sudden. And that's not what we wanted. And so what the goal would be, instead of budgeting 150 with surplus revenue for next year, we get that down to 100, Amy. If right? we have the 100. We will have the 100. I'm telling you, we are projected okay. to have a surplus. So okay. we will have the 100. And we knew that when we built your budget. Okay. And we also were using ESSER funds to fund some things locally. You are going to have a surplus. And so the plan would be to, to dwindle that down over time. So that I you're not having to use surplus money to offset revenue. But you've been doing that traditionally. So what you would have saw is instead of having a decrease in taxes, and Rochester and a slight increase in Stockbridge, that would have been multiplied by the 150 if we didn't use it. Right. No, I understand that concept. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you have continue? Sorry, I jumped in on you. Um, we're just going to give the... Okay. Uh, is there uh, Ethan has his hand raised. If, all right. Ethan. Oh. Sorry, it's, it's hard. It's noisy where I'm at, so I don't know if it's going to work. I might have to type it in. Okay. I'll just say quickly, I, I support Tara's plan. Um, and we talked about this a fair bit, Tara, and then Amy and I. And I just support, um, I think it's a wise use. I think it's really important symbolically as well to finally lay to rest where the Dandelion Daycare money was, because it was some, a bit of contention. And I think it also brings the two funds when we maybe someday down the road unify these two funds. It brings them together with somewhat a similar balance, which I think is not a bad thing. So um, I just feel that's a good move forward. Thank you. All right. Another board member have a, a comment or? Okay. But Bill then. You know, I, I think I've mentioned it before, I think sound budgeting, we need to have investments in our capital structure, in this case our buildings and our grounds. And we invest in our teachers and, and everything else, administration, we need to be doing that. And we haven't been able to do it. Stockbridge, through the, um, and I commend uh, our predecessors uh, several years ago, decided uh, it was wise to start setting money aside for capital improvements. And, and thanks to Tara, you um, verified that that amount is $109,000. And I think those dollars are wisely set aside and they should be used for um, down the road future capital needs of the Stockbridge Central School. At the same time, it sounds like your predecessors in Rochester did the same thing with the uh, Dandelion Lion, uh, Daycare and wanting to 
designate and, and put those monies set aside for capital. And uh, I'm very supportive of that, and I think that really, really, really makes sense. That leaves a net, um, if the numbers are correct, around the Tower 63,650, which is not designated. So we've got, as, as Ethan said, we've got 109 with Stockbridge, we've got 70 with Rochester, and I think it makes sense to continue to set monies aside when we are fortunate enough to have that, and I'd like to suggest in future budgeting that we budget for capital improvement. Um, that that 63,650 uh, be warned for a combined, unified capital um, account. And uh, that could be tapped based on the needs of the two campuses um, and every, all the other resources, uh, resources that we have in mind so that we end up with two designated amounts and we start building a combined unified. That's and I, I, our strength is being unified. I think that's and uh, awesome. so we've got the best of both worlds. We've got building blocks on both sides and we're building something together. So I, my suggestion would be is that 63,650, whatever the amount is, that net amount uh, be warned for setting up a reserve fund for the unified um, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. I like that idea. I do too, because I think as we get ready to do capital improvements, you could tap those two standalone districts for each building. The two standalone capital improvement funds for each building. Yep. We know that's not going to even cover all of it, right? right? But that would put those to bed, and then you've got this other one that's your building forward. Yeah. Um, and I do think it's it's symbolic of unification. I think and trust. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, do we need to make a motion? Well, you'll uh, no. You don't need to make a motion. What you, you're actually going to make the motion when you adopt the warning. For but the we warning. need to know what you wanted to do okay. to bring that warning to you. Uh, is the rest of the board members that are on um, online uh, good with with that for the warning? I got a thumbs up from Justine. I'm good with it. Pat. Robert, is that something, or do you have further questions? Yes, uh, I'm on board with that. Um, that would take care of reserves for um, uh, capital improvements. How about a reserve for uh, uh, for student tuition and such? I think that was uh, talked about before. So I do agree, but I, the more I thought about it, I think we'll always pay for a child's um, schooling but yet we might shy away from paying for new repairs on a building. And so I really think that we should put all this money into a building reserve fund. I, I think we'll always pay for a, a child's schooling, so. Okay, Ethan, do you have any comment or uh, are you in agreement with? Oh yeah, I, I, as I said, I support this. Okay. I support Terrence Flynn, and I agree this this moving forward using the extra for a combined is a good idea. Okay, great. Noted then. Good deal. Okay. Uh, Terrence, do you have anything else in your um, business manager's report? Not at this time. I'll get this all written up in the warning. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. All right. You're Mo welcome. Moving on to the energy committee. So uh, it, it's my pleasure to bring Eric Lafayette to you from EI. Just a reminder, all this work that's being completed has been part of the free performance audit. Um, and this is just the initial step one of them presenting to you their initial findings. They're going to come in a couple months with a more detailed cost analysis of it. Uh, but they'll give you a sense on where they think they can find some efficiencies and just some concepts in regards to capital improvements. Great. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that introduction. I'm Eric Lafayette with Energy Efficient Investments. Um, I live in Burlington, Vermont. I'm based out of Vermont. Um, our company is based out of Merrimack, New Hampshire, which is just south of Manchester. 
Um, if you don't mind switching to the next slide, I'll try to run through these pretty quick. But I just kind of want to give you an overall um, understanding of what we're doing and where we're at on the process. So right now, we're just in the, the initial energy audit phase of the process. So we've gone through your buildings. Um, we've done some initial audits. We've done lighting audits. Um, we've brought engineers through. Um, we brought an architect through. And we're starting to build the report of what we're finding at your schools. Um, and at this point, um, you know, I'm just kind of trying to give you a, just a general overall feeling of some of the initial things that we saw and some of the energy saving opportunities that we found. Um, and then as we further develop our audit and we get more details specifically of what we think are the, the energy saving measures the district should go after, we'll present it back to you guys with more detailed um, line items, specifically of what the energy saving measures are. Um, next slide. Um, we've had a lot of success in Vermont. Um, Addison Northwest, which is Virgin's um, school district, um, we did a major upgrade there. Bennington Schools, Mill River, um, and then quite a few schools in New Hampshire as well. Um, we entered into the Vermont, Vermont market probably five or six years ago, um, but we've been working out of New Hampshire for 15 plus years and had success all throughout New Hampshire and now Vermont. And we're trying to build our Vermont portfolio. Next slide. So um, Addison Northwest, which I mentioned, that's for Jens. They went for a really comprehensive upgrade. They spent 7.6 million. Um, they swapped out all their old oil fired boilers for the high efficient condensing boilers, LED lighting, um, eliminating the steam heating systems, adding a solar PV field and upgrading the roof. Next slide. Um, Mill River School District is another one that we did the year after Virgen's. Um, they really look for just budget neutral projects, whereas Virgen's wanted to address a lot of the capital concerns that they had with their school as well. Mill River was really just looking for budget neutral, and there we did a dry chip biomass heat plant, which is a wood chip boiler. Um, also LED lighting, which always has a great payback. And then DDC building automation, which is your control system. Um, that allows for web-based controls where you can sign in Kind of similar to your Nest thermostat where you can log in anywhere that has internet access and see what's going on inside of your school from an HVAC standpoint. And then analytics, which for us is like kind of your, that's your long-term um, continuous energy monitoring. So that's a monthly report where we go back, we look through your DDC system and we try to find ways to optimize um, the controls based on the use of the school. Um, next slide. So why do we have success in Vermont? Um, a lot of it's based on just the local teams and partners that we've built in the area. Um, we work a lot with local engineers, engineering services of Vermont, EV engineering. Um, so we use mechanical, electrical, um, structural engineers that are all based out of Vermont. Um, all the contractors, when we go out to bid, we have great relationships with a lot of the major mechanical, electrical, um, control contractors in Vermont, and we've done a lot of work with them recently. Um, so we really try to build a local team, and we try to find people that match the project. So we're not going out to the biggest contractor if we're looking to swap out, just say, a single unit ventilator. Um, you know, we try to match the contractor up with the right project so we can maximize um, the return for the school district. Next slide. So this is kind of just gives you an idea of how we actually fund our projects. So what we do is, you know, we try to get the baseline of where your schools are at now and understand what your current energy costs are. And then we look for energy saving measures. So an energy saving measure might be swapping out the fluorescent lighting with LED lighting. Um, if you swap that out, and these, I'm just using generic numbers, um, in this scenario, you guys are spending $120,000 a year in energy costs. Um, with the new LED lighting upgrade, your energy costs are going to reduce down to $100,000 a year. So you use that $20,000 in savings towards a lease that will pay for the actual project that you're doing. Um, lighting often has a six to seven year payback. So if you're doing a 10 or 15 year lease, there's opportunities to bring other capital projects in with that lighting upgrade. Next slide. Some of the initial assessments, it's just like, very nice schools. Like they're very well kept, they're very clean, they have big windows, lots of natural light, um, and they've really maximized the life expectancy of the equipment in there. Um, you can tell that it's over the years it's been well cared for. Everything when I went in there was working, it's maintained, 
Um, but the reality is it's just way past the end of its useful life for the most part. Um, and there are a lot of opportunities for energy upgrades and just bringing the systems that you have right now up to code and up to energy standards. And then I see a lot of opportunities to just reduce the general CO2 emissions um, based on the fossil fuel burning that's going on in the school. Next slide. Okay, so this, one of the initial things that I noticed at Stockbridge and Rochester, lighting, so LED lighting upgrades right now, it's fluorescent lighting at both school. We just sent, um, well, you guys were out on break last week. We did a lighting audit at both schools. So we hope to have information back on that soon. Controls, um, like I mentioned, that's the DDC control system, web-based control. Right now, everything is a localized control. So your guys' ventilation systems are working off like a time clock that you would see not a whole lot different than in like a residential house that may run like an outside light or something like that. Um, and then you guys have basic thermostats that kind of control the heat. So there's huge opportunities to upgrade on the control end. And a lot of it's based on, you know, doing night setbacks and really optimizing the system so it's only in use so that you're providing the comfort to the students when it's actually in use. Um, ventilation upgrades, um, energy recovery is something that, you know, so energy recovery is when you're actually taking, so in a building you're ventilating, you're bringing um, outside air into the building and you're also exhausting air to keep kind of a neutral um, balance, pressure balance in the building. So when energy recovery will actually take the heat off of the exhaust air and it will um, transfer it to the the outside air so instead of you know in the middle of the winter trying to heat up negative 20 degree air to ambient room temperature 70 degrees for ventilation you know you're only heating up 35 or 40 degree air so you're picking up a huge delta t so that's something that we're going to look at at, at both schools um, upgrading the insulation and just the the ventilation um, through the school is something that we're going to look at as well and then um, on top of it, our report is going to include some capital replacements that really don't have probably any energy savings opportunity in it, but just something that we can bring forward to you guys um, and bring to your attention. And it might be something that you might be able to wrap into your project as well. Next slide. Boiler room. Um, Stockbridge, you guys have a newer, newer Buderis boiler, um, both utilizing fuel oil. Um, something that I've been talking about throughout the district is looking in something that we've had a lot of success on and actually has really good payback is a wood chip system. So wood pellet or, or dry chip or green chip, any three of them is something that we're going to look closely at. Um, conversion to LP, um, over the last five years, um, LP has been cheaper than oil. Um, and it has been that it's this year that's. The same way this year and i expect it to be that way moving forward as well um, so if wood chips don't work out um, maybe an lp um, might be a better fuel source than oil um, the boiler on the left is from rochester which is you know has seen it's it's done a lot of good work and it's past its useful life whereas the boiler on the right is from stockbridge which is currently utilizing oil um, that is a boiler that could get converted to LP, which would reduce your CO2 emissions um, and actually probably save money as well, just on the buyout with a fuel purchase. Pump upgrades, there's been some upgrades and pumping through the school, um, but something that we do is we look at adding variable frequency drives on all the pumps. Um, and then, like I said, a district-wide pellet system. And then one big one big focus point is you know trying to eliminate the steam at Rochester. They still have the older portion of the school that is heated through the steam system. Um, they do have an addition off the end of the school that has a heat exchanger and converts to hot water. So I think a goal for that school would just you know try to eliminate the steam, go to a pure hydronic system, which gives you a lot more precise control of the heating. As well, um, there's just more people that work on hydronic systems. Um, steam, steam is kind of going by the way, wayside and finding people that are willing to work on them um, is becoming less and less. Next slide. Controls. Um, what you see on your left is an air compressor. It's part of a pneumatic control system at Rochester. Um, 
this actually uses air to move actuators, which controls your heating and your, your ventilation at the school. Um, this is something that became obsolete about 30 years ago and they went to electronic controls. Um, so going, so probably looking at doing a district wide control system with a company like temperature controls of Vermont, um, control technologies, Johnson controls, um, somebody like that, where, like I said, where you'd have that web-based access and then you, and that really allows you to optimize your energy use because it, it provide um, it provides trending data. So you're able to go back and check like, Oh, what was our, you know, unit doing in the middle of the night last night? Was it running when it wasn't supposed to be? Um, without having this DDC and web-based controls, um, you know, you're really just relying on people being there at all times, knowing if your equipment is running or not. Next slide. Ventilation equipment, um, you know, same thing. You guys have ventilation equipment. It's, it was running when I was there. Um, it is past its useful life. Um, and like I said, there is no energy recovery. Um, I, I would guess based on the equipment that I saw that there might be spaces that might be a little underventilated. Um, so that's something that we do have our engineers looking at. Uh, we are running reports right now of um, how much space, how much ventilation is needed in the space due to the occupancy. Um, what are you currently serving and um, what does it take to get it up to, to code standards? So that will be part of our report for moving forward. Next slide. LED lighting, same thing. There's a mixture. There, you guys have some newer fixtures over at Rochester. Um, Stockbridge has older fixtures. So usually when we look at LED lighting, there's kind of two options. Do you replace just the bulb itself or do you replace the whole fixture? Um, so that's something that will be part of our analysis and we'll give you guys both options. Obviously, if you just replace the bulb, it's a lot quicker payback period but you're also losing a lot of the functionality that you would get if you went with a new LED fixture. Um, some of the cool features that you see now with the LED fixtures is like auto daylight dimming. So, you know, you guys have some schools that have some really big windows at it. Um, so being able to utilize and harvest the natural daylight, your lights will auto dim. So it maintains a foot candle at the actual desk that meets code standards. Um, so there's really good energy savings and um, in that opportunity as well. Next slide. And then just moving on to capital projects. Um, you know, there's stuff that there's facade updates over at Dockbridge school. There's roofing at Rochester, um, kitchen upgrades at both schools, ADA compliance. So there's stuff that we're looking at that's outside of the actual energy savings um, opportunities that we really focus on as an, as an energy service company. But we do like to bring these forward because a lot of times, you know, if, if we're going through and we're replacing the whole ventilation system and we're adding ductwork up above the drop ceilings, um, you know, that might be the opportunity that we replace the old sagging ceiling tile in the space. So we're going to bring all those things. It, sometimes it makes sense to do some projects in conjunction with other projects. Um, but our goal is really to lay it all out for you guys in a nice, clear line item, explain it all. Like, this is a code measure. This is an energy saving measure. And this is, you know, really a capital improvement that's due to the life cycle of, of the issue that you guys have come up with. Um, and that's kind of our process of how we, of how we um, tackle each one of these schools. Next slide. So over the next three months, um, you know, going into summertime, we're going to continue working on our, our energy audits. And I hope in something that I'll talk about with Jamie here in the next couple of weeks, which is going to be our second round of meetings with you guys, which is really going to dive more into details of what did we specifically find? What are some of the initial energy saving measures that we found with some of the budgets and paybacks? Um, and then at that point, um, you know, we really want to sit down with you guys and understand what energy saving measures you want to further investigate. And then that's really when we dive in and we start providing more detailed drawings, specifics on equipment, um, and then, you know, really dive deep and get hard, true numbers. Um, so that's where we're at on the process. And I would think in three, four months, we'll be meeting back with you guys again and hopefully have more information for you. Wonderful, thank you. That's all is, is wonderful. Uh, Ethan, go ahead. Yeah, Eric, thank you very much. It's a 
really, really detailed, and I love the I love the variability you're giving us. Are you going to give us in three months? So it's that, it, yeah. yeah. It's going to be very, you know, I don't make decisions for people. All I try to do is lay out all the facts and information. If you guys want to go forward with a wood chip, I'm happy to provide all the information of what the costs are. And we don't only look at the upfront cost. You know, for us, it's the life cycle cost. How long is this equipment going to last? What's the fuel source? And what can you expect the prices to be in the future? And that's really, you know, hopefully we try to give as much information as possible so you guys can make informed decisions that will be, you know, a, a big benefit to the district over the next 20 years. Um, uh, two, more, two more things, if I may. Um, uh, just uh, uh, one is I hope that we can turn all of this into an educational opportunity for our students to learn about what's happening in their school and energy efficiency and, you know, really, really, you know, show them the boiler. Talk about what efficiency is, and talk about lighting, and talk about you know, so that this can, so this is an educational opportunity as well, uh, which of course is always what we're looking for. The second question I had, or the second the question I had is, I, I don't remember. I think Jamie mentioned before, but how do you get paid in this process? I just forgot. Yeah. So we, so all the work that we're doing right now is pretty much just upfront. Um, and we get paid when you guys actually want to move forward with the project. So, that, we, so we're ultimately the construction manager, construction manager in the GC. So right. we only get paid if we bring projects to you guys that you guys ultimately vote on, approve, and want to move forward with. And at that, and at that price level. And at that price point, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So we're we're going to provide you guys a bunch of different pricing. Um, you know, our company, we're an energy service company. So our, our, we're financially audited. We have to follow federal guidelines. Um, and we're more than happy to open up the book and show you guys all the numbers on, on where the, where the pricing comes. And at the end of the day, we, you know, we do $80 million a year in contracts and we end up with about a 2% profit across the board. So, um, um, right. we're really an energy service company that's just out there to try to help reduce CO2 emissions and reduce costs and provide good good buildings to the students. That's uh, so okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. Great. Excellent. Does anybody else have a question for Eric? Uh, Robert. Uh, yes, uh, just a couple of technical questions. The um, When you replace or suggest replacing the controls, uh, existing controls use um, uh, pneumatic uh, actuators, do you replace the pneumatic actuators or do you run a hybrid system? I would, um, I'm going to get rid of all the pneumatics in the school. I mean, ideally, I do, well, if you guys want to work with EEI, I'm not going to move forward with any pneumatics. So that okay. would probably be the, <laughs> the okay. first thing. What's that? A couple other questions. Um, one, does your, the, the scope of your project investigate uh, solar on the roof? you know, along with the, um, you know, roof uh, insulation on, on the roof? Yes, it will. Okay. Yep. And, and finally, is there any, um, uh, are you looking at any heat pump technology or is that, that not within the scope? Um, we do utilize a lot of heat pump technology and where we usually utilize it is through the ventilation system. So what we've been doing a lot recently is when we upgrade the ventilation, we add like a dehumidification slash heat pump option to it, which would really provide your first stage of heating and actually provide cooling throughout the school. Well, we call it dehumidification, not exactly cooling. Um, and then, um, and then the heat pump would actually provide your first stage of heat. Um, but in all of the schools that we do, we always have at least that secondary heat source, which is usually your perimeter baseboard heat or radiant ceiling panels, which would maintain in this project as well. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Eric? Okay, well, uh, I have a quick question. Go ahead, Pat. Um, I guess one of my questions is, are you you know, as, as well as looking at lighting and um, heating and ventilating, are you looking at actual building materials as well as far as windows, how old they are, if they're even efficient at this point, 
um, and are you assessing wall cavities as well and what the R values are and if anything is not up to code in that aspect? Yes, we will. So usually what we do, um, unfortunately stuff like windows, replacing windows don't have great paybacks. So really lumping them into a performance contract usually has its implications because windows are a very heavy capital expense. Um, but we will provide budgets for window replacements based on what we see at other schools. Um, and I'm more than happy to give an analysis or run, you know, run payback periods of what the, what the windows are. We typically find payback on window replacements that are roughly 40 years, um, just because the, they just haven't, there's just not a whole lot of payback in replacing windows. But, and we are, you know, our company originally started out as an insulating company, an air sealing company. Um, so we certainly will. One of the first things that we do at every school and one of your best paybacks is air sealing and upgrading the insulation, both in wall cavities and through the attic. So that will be something that's part of our report as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then one other question was, was as far as, if, you know, going with, um, with uh, pellets or wood chips, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I love the concept and everything, but is that is that is the the maintenance side and the time loading it, is that something that would already fall within say the budget of, of having maintenance staff there or is that gonna you know increase cost and salary for somebody to have to maintain that? Yeah, very good question. I mean, that's something that we can certainly go over with your facilities crew as we move forward. I gotta tell you like I'll tell you right now, biomass plants work really good at high schools and bigger facilities. Mm -hmm. um, smaller facilities, um, at that point, you'd probably be moving over towards a pellet boiler, which is not nearly as much maintenance as, say, a wood chip boiler would be. Um, mm -hmm. But that being said, they are more maintenance. You know, you do have to go and clear the ash on, you know, a weekly basis. Um, and we would, you know, I'm happy to share one of the things that we actually had a lot of success with, and I'm happy to do it with your facilities team as well, is we can go check out some of the facilities where we've installed pellet boilers and where we've installed wood chip and where, where we've installed LP condensing. And I'd be happy to walk you guys and meet the facility directors at each one of the schools and you guys can get a feeling for what they have for maintenance on each one of the boilers. But that is true. I mean, Wood chip and wood pellet are an additional maintenance task of mm -hmm. uh, say a standard LP condensing boiler. Okay. Well no, thank you. I, I appreciate everything you put together so far. <laughs> yeah. I do have a Okay. Robert? Uh, just one one question uh, along those lines. Um, when you've done all this work, will there be um, essentially an upgrade or, or even creation of a operations manual for all the heating, all the systems when you're done? Yeah, absolutely. So Robert, one of the big things with EEI is, um, you know, we try to create these long-term relationships. And one of the things I talked about was this analytics reporting, which is, which I definitely, which I think is your most bang for your buck. So essentially, um, we don't walk away from your school. What I try to do is I try to sell every school a five-year um, analytics report, which is a monthly breakdown of how your school is doing um, with its energy consumption and with its energy saving measures. And that's something that we go through with your facilities director on a monthly basis. So, um, and on top of it, we need to guarantee these energy savings for the, for the duration of the lease if we decide to go that way. So yeah, we are we're totally vested in you know the long term relationship and O and M manuals and you know we pick good subcontractors that will pick up your phone if something breaks. So um, owners training and operations manuals, uh, I should say owners training is the best energy saving measure that you can have. I can tell you that right now. Having a good manager that knows what the how the control system works is worth every penny. So we do spend a lot of time with owner training. Thank you. Okay. If there, thank you very much for your report. We definitely look forward to uh, seeing you again. Thank you all. Have a good night. Appreciate okay. it. All right. Uh, moving on to the negotiations committee. Um, 
Yeah, hi. I'm, hi. I'm, I'm, we've, we've been meeting with the teachers uh, union, rep, union representatives. Um, we've had a number of sessions. Um, they've been constructive. They've been respectful. They've involved careful listening on both sides of the needs, requirements, issues, um, and I believe that both sides are trying to understand and consider what's going on to the best interest, not only to both sides, but to the entire SU. Um, They've also been very focused, and we've gone through a number of, of, of uh, proposals, and the good news is that uh, a number of proposals, we have what they call a TA, which is, is a tentative agreement um, that have been signed by both, both um, representatives, both of the union and of the SU. Uh, we've got some considerable work to do to bring things together. I, I'm an optimistic person and I happen to think that we can get there and, and get a, a, an agreement that's in everybody's best interest and I look forward to uh, being part of that, uh, that effort. That's wonderful. That sounds really great. <laughs> Positive. Dale's been great to have on the team by the way. I, I can see. <laughs> He's definitely had a positive influence. That's yeah. wonderful. Great. Okay. Um, any questions for the negotiation committee? Great. Uh, superintendent evaluation committee? Is that Ethan? He just dropped off, I think. Oh. Uh, that's, uh, you wanted to, Bill. I can speak to that, too. Um, the, um, the committee met um, in, in mid-February. We had a very constructive um, um, meeting and just sharing information because some of us are newbies like myself and others have been around for a while. Um, the good news, I'm saying this will be the second, second time that the supervisory union will be utilizing a model developed by the Vermont School Board Association in evaluation, evaluating of superintendents. So it isn't like we're trying to scramble and create something out of whole cloth, we've got a very good model, and I I reviewed it, and and um, I think it's very it, it it's very good, and it's good in a number of ways. It's good that, because it's going to be fair. It's good because it's going to help us focus on what's important. It's going to help us look at things that are measurable and, and important to accomplish. So we're looking at the past. But we're also looking to the future, and um, we're a team. The board's together, the SU, the superintendent, and his team. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm heartened by the, the model that um, we're following that, and I give credit to the SU chair um, for, for going that way. Now, each individual district board has an important role here. Uh, each one of us should have received an email uh, from the White River uh, Supervisory Union of a questionnaire. And that questionnaire is basically uh, going through the criteria that's been established, which I think is sound, about evaluating our superintendent. Our total take on this is only going to be as strong as the participation and the due diligence of each one of us uh, looking at that questionnaire and filling out that questionnaire. And I think there is a time frame, it might be like March 10th or something. So if you don't, this doesn't ring a bell, um, you can check with Christy um, or myself, whatever it is, and we'll make sure you get it. If, if it's something that, and everybody here is so busy that you set aside, I encourage you strongly to go back to that email and fill out that questionnaire. It should take about I think 15, 20 minutes of careful consideration, but I think each board members of all the SU um, is going to make this evaluation process um, strong and valuable. So 
uh, it's underway, and with our united participation, I think uh, it'll be very valuable going forward. Great. Great. Um, White River Valley SU updates board chair. This is just kind of a standing agenda item that we've been putting on the local districts in case board members need, needed a quick SU. Wide update, Ethan, we haven't met yet this past month. Um, we were supposed to meet tomorrow, but we weren't able to get secure a quorum. Um, so it's going to be postponed until the 16th. And a big part of that is I have a lot of outgoing board members right now because of right. tonight's vote. So there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, there's several SU, yeah. um, current SU members who are going off our boards. So once those boards reorg, we'll have enough. I thought there was a chance we were still going to pull through, but some of our normal attendees are uh, not available okay. um, tomorrow. So that's going to be postponed. Um, and I, the only other update I'll say on that, and then Ethan can jump out if he wants is I've been working with the VSBA to, they lost their trainer, Susan, uh, in the fall. And so we were scheduled to have board training in January, February, March. Right. And so I've emailed Sue Kozlowski about their new trainer starts March 16th. My hope is that the March 28th meeting will pick up with the January planned. Um, and I've been trying to encourage everyone, all 31 board members to attend if possible, but we will record it and send it out to the folks to view. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And my reading of his bio, of uh, the new director of support, where I, I don't know what his official title is, is very, very, very strong. So I think uh, to tap that is really wise. I appreciate your proactive uh, involvement on this because I think we all can learn and share and we'll be stronger by it. Thank you. Great. Uh, any questions or comments? Um, one thing, uh, this is Ethan, uh, one thing I want to just add in. Um, uh, one topic that the SU board has been talking about is going forward, we've sort of been in a crisis mode with a lot of turmoil over the last three years as this SU, since this SU was created. And the idea of how do we shape this SU and the job of superintendent for a a future, a more stable future for this SU. And what does that mean and what does that look like? Um, and it's a very interesting conversation. I think there's also a lot of feeling that we are starting to pull together as an SU and look at ourselves as an SU. Um, uh, uh, at least, you know, that is my feeling. I could speak, say that, but I, I think I'm hearing that from other people as well. Uh, we tried to have a retreat of the board and it just, it just didn't pull together. It was the wrong weekend do that but I still think there's an option for that as we get into the spring so um, there's there's some good thinking about how do we make this a stronger SU how do we go forward and make um, and, and quite honestly make Jamie's job uh, a job that he can do until he's done and then someone else will walk in and not feel like wow this is an overwhelming job this is something I can do so um, that's that's some some of the areas we've been uh, discussing thank you Okay, wonderful. We will move on then to discussion items, uh, board goal setting and mission vision. Yeah, and I've got a uh, couple plea again here on this. Um, just chaos and where I am right now um, uh, made it un untenable to get a meeting going, so... Uh, I, I'll, I'll take the mea culpa, and we will have something for you next time. <laughs> um, uh, we we had a you know good meeting, and we we are moving forward, and I feel confident we're going to get there. It's just uh, I need to uh, you know keep it going. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Nine point two annual meeting logistics and mailer. So I mean I can kick you guys off. The first decision I think you really need to do is. It's Australian ballot versus in person, right? Okay. And I think if you decided, and then if you decided to go in person, whether you, then the next question is, do you go in person on your normal date or do you delay? Do you feel better delaying a little bit? 
Those are the two things you can decide as a board in okay. statute. What is our you current You can move date? to Australian ballot and you can delay. Okay. Those are your two options. And what is our current date of? Tara, what's the our son? May 3rd, right, Tara? Yeah, the first Tuesday. May 3rd. Jihad's the second Tuesday. May 3rd. I okay. get you guys confused with Jihad sometimes. So okay. With that one. Um, okay. So um, we have two options to discuss. I think we had started talking about this last week um, in regards to if we wanted to do the voting by Australian ballot uh, rather than the in-person uh, meeting, which is what our um, bylaws or whatever they, whatever we normally do it. Um, I guess I would be inclined to think uh, voting by Australian ballot might get more people to vote because maybe they are more comfortable with being able to just go um, into their local uh, town clerk or, or uh, I'm not sure the logistics of, of the ballot, but that might be uh, easier. I think at the same time we do still need to have a presentation. You have to if you okay. go to Australian ballot. So, um, so we still would have a presentation um, and we could choose to do that either in person or a hybrid or probably a hybrid which is what we've been going with and that kind of makes makes sense um, I guess I would be leaning towards the Australian ballot I think we would get more more voting um, than uh, just uh, a voting at meeting uh, Discussion, Ethan. And again, I'm still sort of not here. Um, uh, I yep. think live meetings, live meetings are good. Um, I just think seeing the board, seeing them in front of it, and and voting from a floor, it is a tradition. Um, I'm I'm happy to go either way, but I just think it's the way our town meeting's going to go back in person. And um, I think it's really great for people to turn out and see us there. Um, yes, higher vote numbers. Yes, I think Australian ballot. Um, my, my instinct is always going to be to push for live. And if that means another week or two, fine. But, um, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go with it anyway as we go. But that's just my, my two cents there. Well, I, I do just want to comment that, uh, as you just mentioned about uh, our town meeting being in, um, in person, that is true, but the voting is actually Australian ballot the next day. So, whereas we would still get um, everybody, as many people who, who wanted to come to a live meeting to, to, to get there and, and get the information, um, but it wouldn't... Re it wouldn't restrict the voting to just the people who are able to attend the meeting. No. Question, um, is there, a, do we have flexibility on the date of a town meeting? We talked about our regular schedule would yes. be May 3rd. You How delay. far back, or back can we move it uh, later in May? Be f certain things bump really, up. It'd, it'd be good to have it by the end of May because we have to wait 30 days for a petition. Yep. And then we can submit the results to the Agency of Education. So then you're looking at the, the end of June, right? And, you know, Tara can speak up. But I think we certainly would want to have a budget approved by the 1st of June, if possible, so that that can get to the AOE and it doesn't affect any of our end fund payments. Right, because then you're starting to, uh, the end of June, you've, you're going into the next school year that has potentially an, an unvoted Budget just makes it a little funkier. Uh, but if we push, I have a question. Uh, yes, Pat. Could the meeting be the in person and virtual, yes. similar to our meetings? Yes. Not to vote from the floor. You you can't do both. No. Um. The the actual information meeting can be done with with. In person, a hybrid like we're doing right now, in person and on um, Zoom. But we cannot do a vote with hybrid. people on Zoom 
and in person. They have to, if, if we're going to do a vote, a floor vote, meaning that the people in the room are voting on the budget, they have to be in the room or the location that we are. Got you. So we could do the hybrid with the Australian ballot. Right. We could do a hybrid informational yeah. with a yeah. with an Australian ballot voting. I, I like that, personally. This is Robert. I concur. I think I, I think there's going to be a, a a lot of problem in having people want want in a lot of people because of COVID to being there for just a in person vote. So uh, definitely Australian ballot. And then at that point, if you're, it, I think this this hybrid works very well. I would. It's interesting because we're split on this thing, and but I it isn't like I'm you chained to one opinion. But not to bore you, but I've gone to at least a hundred town meetings in my lifetime, and uh, most of them in Massachusetts, and uh, a representative town meeting and an open town meeting and everything else like that. And they take a great deal of preparation, and everything else. But I I must say that in my experience, I'm amazed that. The vast majority of the decisions that are made by the people there that listen to the debate, that ask questions, that got answers, I think overall, and, and I had to prepare for all these things, um, the results were better than uh, if they were just going to vote on a ballot and who they heard from on or what, what circumstance on that. And I I'm a believer that town meetings, even though it's a smaller number, people that come, all ages, whatever the case, they care. And they're not shy about asking questions, tough questions about why and when and how come. But at the end of the day, we come together and there's a vote and the decisions made, I think, are have been very, very wise. It isn't like there's been one faction or another faction. I don't think a fact it, it weighs one way or the other. So my tendency is that, and I'd be curious if we don't have to make a decision tonight, I don't know when we have to, but um, we're talking about May, and if we can talk about the latter part of May, and it's sunny and it's warm, and I like to think that people my age feel better coming out at night, uh, when it's warm and, and it's light and everything else like that, that we can have the participation uh, that we need. Um, I'm also a believer that turnout isn't necessarily a measure of performance. And that sounds weird. Why isn't it? Well, in my experience, turnout frequently is you've got, you've got a burning issue, you want to be there. But if you don't have a burning issue, you read the, the school report, everything seems to be fine, you don't have to be there. Mm -hmm. And so to have a turnout that's less than the Australian ballot doesn't say that it's undemocratic. It says, in my opinion, a lot of that is people say, okay, you've done your homework, you've figured things out, your proposal is reasonable, it's in the student's interest and the town's interest and the taxpayer's interest. So, I'm not bothered by the fact that we don't have the same number of people voting there at all. So either way, um, I'm comfortable doing, but I, I must say I agree with Ethan on this one. Wouldn't it be great to come together again as a community, a combined community, educational community, to talk about, listen to, ask questions, and debate the future of our schools? And boy, I'd love to be able to do that. I definitely hear you and understand what you're saying and um, if we I, I just don't want it to be um, inhibited for anybody to come because of people's uh, fear of COVID or yeah. us being able to do something in a COVID safe way um, you do say later May nice day you know outside you know people could feel more secure and, and be able to come out because they're you know, there are a number of people who do want to be involved, but they really yeah. are, are, are unable to participate because of COVID. Um, but you do bring a very good point. Um, 
of the community and of the um, you come out if if you have a you know a burning issue um, but on the other hand um, and the nice you need everybody the, to come out, not just the people who are... No, but the nice thing about the burning issue is they have an opportunity to ask that burning question and then get information. Right then and there. That right. is not necessarily the rumor, what the people are saying, but what the... And then you can weigh that and say, it's still an issue with me, I'm voting no. But the nice thing is, frequently, I've gone to town meetings, my opinion has changed from the beginning to the end of a debate because of what I heard. What's happened. And that's... That's the power of our New England town meeting a tradition. And I think the hope is that that would happen at the um, informational yes, meeting as well. Help. It's just yep. um, you, you have the informational meeting and yep. then the yep. shared yep. ballot. Yep. Um, okay, well, uh, why don't we think about that for a second and then talk about our date and then we'll circle back to um, oh, Robert. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say that I, I agree with Ethan and Bill about the, the far the superior um, the superiority of in of uh, in person town meeting. But I just the problem is is we're trying to predict the future of what COVID is going to be, and we really just don't know right now. And I know there are a lot of people who are just would would not go to a in person meeting. Um, there, it's just too soon, and and I I reluctantly would advise that we have Australian ballot. Justine, uh, yes, I I think Robert touched on what I was going to say that it, um, we are predicting the future in, in in a way, and I um I feel the same way. I think we should have Australian ballot in a hybrid um, for that reason because we just don't know, but. He, he said it right right before me. Okay. Um, I just want to put a perspective yes. out there that you're going to go hybrid or Australian, but we're all in person for school every single day. And while I understand the concern, like it's a school vote, wouldn't it be great to open our buildings back up to the community to come in and see people? And I just think that it's, you know, we're transitioning and I know it's hard and people don't want to be out yet, but I really see Bill's point and I think it's interesting that we're still in a hybrid model, but we're all like, and nobody's saying they don't feel safe at school. People feel safe at school. I don't want to misconstrue that, but I think if we're voting on a school vote and we're in person, then we should all be in person together. I hear that. Justine? I, I realize that the folks that do go to school or are in school feel safe in school, but I do know a lot of people who still don't go out in public right now. Um, community members, not necessarily just parents, but there are community members who don't go to church still, don't go to the library still. I, I feel like my my the way I feel is to it, that it's important to include that. So yeah, I think that being in person is important. But I do know that there are people who are afraid. So I think, you know, the hybrid model will allow them to be included and it would be fit, most fair. Okay, and we need to vote on this. You do. Yes, so, and yeah. we I mean, also so, need yeah, to come there's up with an the date. Um, well, if, you're gonna, if you were to do Australian ballot, I think my suggestion would be you keep your normal date you would delay if you're going to do in person. Um, I don't see any reason to delay if you're going to do Australian ballot. Um, if you weren't deciding on Australian ballot, you could just do a move to delay and not set a date. That's within statute. Um, but that would mean you making a decision um, no later than your next meeting, and it would put it way at the end of May. If that's the case, so I mean that's your other option too. If okay. you if you wanted more time to make a decision, then there is a motion just to delay, um, or you make a motion, which Tara can pop into the chat, that moves you to Australian ballot, and we would as my assumption would be if you move to Australian ballot, that you just keep your normal date. I don't see why you would delay it. Okay, Ethan. 
Um, I think we should, I think we should vote. Okay. Tonight. Does anybody have a motion they would like to make them? <laughs> I've lost my screen again. <laughs> is it the dongle? I think so, yeah. And this is my backup. The other one didn't work either. Do we, are, do they still see us and hear us? Yes, yes. Okay. They still see us. We just lose that issue. Okay. Sorry, I, I lose, I've been losing visual here every once in a while. So, uh, Ethan, you have your hand raised? I just took it down. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> okay, well, I entertain a motion. Uh, well, I entertain a motion that we, um, we do an uh, in-person meeting on, what's the date, mid-May. Okay, Ethan has made a motion that we do an in-person, uh, in-person meeting and vote. Is that what you're? And vote. Uh, and Ethan, vote. all right. Ethan has made a motion for an in-person meeting and vote. There's specific warning to that motion, Terry. Can you pop that one in the chat as well? It's the delay. Is this to to move the meeting later? Yes. Okay. Why don't you give the board both motions? Yes. And, and we'll vote on them one at a time. Yep, and uh... so the first comment that I put in is if you move to Australian ballot, and that's at 7.53, and the one at 7.54 is to move your meeting to a later date. You have to, you have to specify what the date is in the motion. Um, can't, so we, if we move to a later date, we can't specify that it is in person. We're just saying we're moving to a later date. No, you could it. specify it's in person as well. But you okay. need that person. I think that's, I, I think that's, I really think that's what we're voting on. From the discussion I'm hearing, I think that's what we need to make a vote on. And if we're split, we're split, and that's fine. Um, but I think that's really what the discussion's been about. So I think that's what the issue we need to vote on. Okay, so. I uh, still need that. Ethan, are you making a specific motion? Make, but make well, sure I need a date. Says, I don't have a calendar in front of me, so I need a date um, okay. to push it out. Maybe a, uh, maybe not much, weeks. a week, maybe two. He said the but if you could give me a date. So the 17th? 17th would be fine. 17th, uh, I'll make a motion to that our meeting take place on the 17th in person. Okay, you see she has a specific uh, you have to read the chat to get the motion exactly correct. I cannot see it anymore, so I cannot help you. Move pursuant, I move pursuant to Act 77 of 2022 to move the day of the 2022 RSUD annual meeting to, where is the rest of that meeting? Oh, to uh, May 17th in person. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, discussion. Okay, uh, there being no discussion, all in favor of moving our meeting to May 17th and having it uh, in-person meeting and vote, um, say aye. 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 So we have two ayes, all opposed, say nay. 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 All right, four nays, that, that motion does not pass. Uh, I just, and anybody want to entertain making a different motion? <laughs> <laughs> I hereby move that the board approve the use of Australian battle, ba balloting for the 2022 annual meeting pursuant to S-172 of the 2022 legislative session. Do I have a second? Okay, sec second. Uh, discussion? There being no discussion, all those... In favor, signify by, say, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Sorry, aye. Okay. The motion passes. Thank you. We will have our uh, informational meeting. we got to decide that, too. That's got to be a date. Well, yeah, because we'll put it on your morning. Okay. So it has to be within 10 days of the vote. Um, and so you could have it the night before if you preferred. Um, it could be the prior week. Um, those are all options. Um, 
I like Friar Week. I, yeah, I initially was going to say the night before because it's fresh in people's minds, but the fact that we are going to be um, videoing it and people would be able to access it um, after we've had the hybrid throughout the week if they were unable to attend at that um, time. So I agree. I think we should do... Tara, they're going to warn an actual location and have it be a hybrid. It won't just be virtual. So they don't need that motion. Okay. Because they'll want a location as well. Do we need to do something different, or are we all No, 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 you're okay. fine. I just need to know the date. Okay. Some boards have gone completely virtual with their information. I mean, Amy, Amy if, you, if I may jump in, um, you make a good point there, that in some ways it's sort of closer to being a real in-person meeting, if it is the night before, and then we vote the next day. I, 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 I totally support that. Yeah, there's two two thoughts. One is it's the night before. It's very fresh in your mind. It's almost as close to a um, mm -hmm. in person. Or the other is you do it uh, through uh, the previous week, um, and then if somebody is unable to attend, let's just say we do it on Wednesday, then they Thursday they would be able to watch the the video, or Friday be able to watch the video of the meeting. Yeah, I like I like your idea. I like that before. The night before, uh, Justine, you, you, that's your thoughts too. All right. Uh, anybody else want to weigh in on uh, when we should have the uh, hybrid annual meeting, informational meeting? Uh, I think uh, night before is good. Okay. My last question is, because uh, we'll warn the location and give the virtual link. Do you remember where you were in person your last floor vote? Here, Stockbridge. So I would suggest that you won this informational meeting in Rochester so that you are going back and forth, even though it's Australian ballot. Because it's last year, it was all, it was all, all, virtual. all, all virtual. Yeah, which is why that motion Tara put it in. But you're going to want a location this okay. year. Okay, do we need to Sorry. Make Cliff, can you Clarification. Yep. Have we have we decided that this is a it's a hybrid um, um, informational meeting? Because we're not voting from the floor, so we can do a hybrid. You that's can right. definitely do a hybrid. Okay. Great, and that's what we've agreed to do. Is that or do we need to agree to that? Uh, do we all agree that we would like to have a, a hybrid uh, informational meeting that is an in-person option and a virtual option? I I do agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. I do too. Okay. <laughs> um, so, do we need a motion to have the? No. Nope, okay. Because we'll just it'll be on your warning. Be on our warning. So it'll be uh, informational meeting May second, uh, Australian ballot voting May third. Okay. Great. Great. Hey, thank you all. Nice to have a vote where we don't agree too. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Jamie, we need to take any action about commingling. Yeah, we should take action on that. Yep, since it's Australian ballot. Do you have that one? Yep, putting it up right now. So Thank just, you, just so um, yeah. folks understand what this means, it means that it your town clerks don't have to bring the votes together in order to count them. This right. means that they, each town clerk can count the votes and report it to your um, your district clerk to report out so that they're not having to move all the ballots. That's the preference of the town clerks, is what we have found. That, um, what, what does everybody feel I'll, about that? I'll, I'll make a motion. I move in pursuant to S223. That the ballots for the RSUD 2022 annual meeting are not commingled due to a continued concern regarding COVID 19 pandemic. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 All aye. aye. All right. So moved. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to uh nope still on annual meeting logistics now ba mailer which is the second part of that i think we're good nope right. okay we don't need to go Lindy, what do you, what do you uh the 
Um, I met with Kate McQueen. She'll be reaching out to folks who need, who contribute different parts, and we will have the draft done by the 16th of March, and oh, no. it'll go to the printer by the 25th. Okay. Now that we have these decisions to make. Right. right. <laughs> that was, that the, was based on the main The only thing, I mean, the big thing for you guys, of course, too, is your, your letter. Yes. Ethan's letter. <laughs> oh, it's totally done. Awesome. Um, and I know I said this last time, but I definitely want, uh, you know, kind of the forefront in that annual, in that mailer, um, the good celebrations that we are, yep. are having. I mean, that's that's what we're doing. We're doing some exciting things, and I want people to know that. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. We, we, like, we like pictures. <laughs> right. Pictures and charts and graphs. and Okay. Um, a point, uh, 9.4, appointment of school district clerk, possible action. So you have Jenny Austin has served as your clerk in the past. Um, she did meet, not meet the threshold of the write-in threshold last year, but that means that as a board you can appoint a clerk, and Jenny has graciously, wow. based on us begging, <laughs> agreed to allow you to appoint her for the remainder of this year. That would be wonderful. Um, and maybe she'll consider putting herself on the ballot for next year, I don't know. Wonderful. But she's at least graciously willing for an appointment this year. Right, Jenny? You haven't changed your mind? That's correct. And there wasn't too much begging. <laughs> well, we're really appreciative, Jenny. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Yes, so do we need to appoint her? Yep. Uh, yep. Through a motion? Yep. So, yeah, you would move to appoint Jenny Austin as right. your school district clerk. And you made a motion to appoint Jenny Austin as our school district clerk for the remainder so of... So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Or, yeah, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Jenny, now you can sign the warnings and things. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Appreciate <laughs> it. Okay. I don't know if you have my email. Karen, but I can send you my whole email address for stuff like that. Great, thank you so much. Okay, 9.5, high school building use request. Yep, so oh. can. Uh, yes, Ethan, did I move on too fast? Go no, ahead. Um, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is probably out of order a little bit, but I just, it just came to me as we were talking about informational meetings. I think it's really important that the school board have some options presented at our informational meeting about what if the town does not accept the high school building. I think we need to at least have started our homework on this. Okay. So that's for just to put out for everyone's thinking. And uh, you can, we can just put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Definitely further discussion. Okay. Uh, high school building use request. So I have um, a couple updates. One, there was the testing request from last uh, meeting, and they've moved to using the town office, and that seems to be working well. Perfect. So no longer has the need for the high school building. So that was that update. I have two other requests. One is for Suzuki um, for the week of July 10th through the 15th. And they are looking to utilize the music room and its practice spaces, the auditorium and uh, the fax room, as well as the bathrooms by the auditorium. What's the fax room? Home ec room. Oh, I'm like, we fax Sorry. machine in there? Like, Every, what, what year are we? <laughs> we do still have fax machines. Okay. But yeah. Okay. So the home ec room. Yep. Um, to be able to utilize those in addition to the elementary spaces. Okay. So that's the first uh, request. That is from. From what? Suzuki, the Green oh, Mountain Suzuki, Suzuki, Suzuki yep, yep, Institute. Yep. Um, so I'll leave that one out there and let you guys talk before we go into the next Okay. Um, well, I think that Suzuki has traditionally um, been very respectful of our spaces and um, is a really good thing to bring into our valleys uh, to bring some talent in. And um, I think we should uh, accept the, their, their, use, their request to use our space. Do we need a motion? Yeah, probably. 
I move to accept the use of the Suzuki Institute for the high school and elementary school building, is that correct? For the period stated? Second. Excellent. Uh, any discussion? Yes. Uh, do, does the motion need to indicate what remuneration will you receive for that? Uh, we, per our previous uh, contracts with them, we receive fifteen dollars per an enrolled student. So it's all based on their mm -hmm. enrollment. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, all right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, motion passes. Okay. And then um, the next uh, request is to be able to use the auditorium on Saturday, June 25th um, for a, uh, event, a special event honoring um, Dorothy Robson. Uh, a celebratory retrospective of her musical compositions um, and they're looking to use it it looks like just have access to it to the day with a uh, something in the evening hours um, okay. and they are willing to donate a fee for use of the auditorium okay uh, I'd entertain a motion do we need to include this? You know, well, I, mean, I think we don't. would just do like a normal rental fee in that particular situation, which is just like based what, by... 100 bucks? 200 bucks? What is it? Uh, it's based on the number of hours. They're really just looking to hold the date so they can move forward. What have we charged in the past? I, I honestly don't know because we've never had just the auditorium rented by right. anyone besides the town. We charge the players like $300, I believe, for those multiple dates. It was multiple dates, and it was also used for the music room, too, though, wasn't it? Uh, I think so. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I've probably to like be determined. 50 to 100 bucks max, I would say. I think we would base it on what custodial time they need. Yeah. That's what I do in other buildings. All right. I, I'd like that. I'd say based on a fee based on a, a custodial time yep. needed to for the event uh, and that we don't need to state the exact amount at this point that right. our administration can um, figure that out that's how we base it on other building use yeah. requests so. was motion to uh, allow the or the group presenting a celebration of Dorothy Robson's music for June July June, June 25th July 25th June 25th uh, for, for the day uh, due and with remuneration to be decided later second excellent uh, uh, any discussion all right all in favor signify by saying aye 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 aye, aye. Okay. all right the ayes have it thank you Okay, um, that looks like we're taking care of everything in discussion items and action items. Uh, do we have any new hires or resignations? One resignation. We do have one resignation. Our um, custodian um, here in Stockbridge has resigned due to health reasons. Oh. And we have had um, a substitute in here this entire um, it would be to accept the resignation of James Coswell. Okay. Well, we're... Move to accept the resignation of custodian Stockbridge. Um, second. Oh. Appreciation. With, with appreciation for, for mm -hmm. the, their work. Well, I'm sad to see them go. Um, all right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I do. Understand. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 All right. The ayes have it. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on to 12, public comment. And I do not believe I see any public. There's no other people on besides what I, these eight. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Great. Do we, we have need, any, Oh, sorry. Didn't interrupt. Do we have any future agenda items? 
goal setting mission again. Yep. Uh, yep. We're but, definitely going to need options for high school. I think we need to bring the high school back into discussion. Yeah, I think we, we, we can't let that just be a plus. We need to start acting on that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to have it. Uh, also, just a discussion on how we, what's our strategy to get the word out about the budget, about what we're trying to do. Um, you know, that's either take home or PR. letters to the editor, all those sorts of things. But I think we need to be organized. I agree. That's um, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have three uh, agenda items for a future meeting, which is going to be Tuesday, April fifth. 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, at the Rochester campus and Google Meet. I want to lock you guys into a special meeting right now okay. next week to adopt your warnings. Tara can run it with you. It, it won't take more than 10 minutes probably. Okay. Um, but it'd be good to set that now. Thursday, Thursday night, possible? This coming Thursday or next Thursday? Um, whichever you want. Thursdays are good. For me, yep. I'd be a bit of oh, Thursday is like Wednesday, Thursday. Tara, would you, do you want to you want you a little more, more time? time to pull them together? I have them, Dad. Okay, so you want to do them Thursday at Bill's going to be busy, but as long as you have a quorum, we'll be fine. Bill will still sign it, and it can be just a virtually warned meeting. By the way, we don't have to warn a location yeah. anymore by statute. Oh, so, okay. We can just warn virtuals um, until next tw January 23rd, uh, 2023, actually. The, so if you want to do this Thursday, what time works best for you guys? Uh, 6.30? 6.30 is good for me, usually. 6.30 is great. All right, virtual meeting. We'll get it out tomorrow for Thursday at 6.30. It's a date with Tara. Nice. Okay. Great. Uh, I believe that that does it. <laughs> oh, did I just sign it? Anything else? Anything else? Amy, Amy, thank you very much for taking over. Yes, no problem. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying wherever you are. <laughs> and we're jealous. <laughs> Excellent. Well, good too. Oh, good. good. Okay, well, I'm entertaining a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. All right. Awesome.